Hello, hello, and welcome to One Place Guide to Vikings, War of Clans. This time, you're invited to start your own Viking saga on the faraway shores. Everything a legendary hero in the making might expect awaits you there. Growing your kingdom, braving the cold winds of Helheim, making allies and unleashing your wrath on the enemies. In this guide, we'll show you the basic mechanics, take a quick peek in the halls of Helheim and share some tips you don't want to miss. Let's go! So here we are. We got a bit of a head start already, our palace is level 6, some crucial buildings are more advanced than the others uh, as well. But I assure you that it doesn't really take a lot of time to get there, probably one hour. And that is a very kind of relaxed tempo that allows you some distractions, grabbing a drink, you know, um, not paying attention to the game. Stuff like that. Let's start with the kind of buildings we have. So, the palace, although I don't know why it's not called a longhouse, that's completely beyond me. But anyway, your palace, that is essentially the reflection of your settlement's power as a Yarl. You can also see your own stats, the city stats, your hero slash lord. This is what your town looks like to the outside world. You can change that, but you would have to meet specific criteria to do so. Next up, there's the Oracle. The place of knowledge. And there are many um, skill trees there. As you might notice with literally hundreds of things to discover for yourself. And this will be a great advantage for you in the game if you do not abandon this part and like really invest in um, in the basics here there will be a moment in the tutorial where you'll be taken to oracle to research something about invaders but i would not recommend focusing on this particular branch at the very beginning the first four maybe also, the uh, the troops below are the ones you want to go for. Then, of course, we have the production buildings. The mine where you get the ore. The farm where you get the food. The lumber mill, of course, for all the wood. A stone quarry. And, but it might be in a different place for you. The manor. They are all responsible for the resources that you see over there, the basic ones I'm talking about. Uh, food, wood, stone, ore, and silver. Those are required for daily basic needs, really, for building, upgrading, you know, the drill. Silver may be a little less frequently than uh, the rest of those, but it's still not a super precious thing, kind of. And then we have gold. This is something that once you're at the same stage as I, something that you might want to hold on because that's your gateway to speeding things up. And you can also use it to purchase all kinds of items and boosts that have an impact on your influence. In that thing either. Um, which essentially is your global ranking. So, it wouldn't hurt to have more of that. You can get that in a number of ways. The easiest one being the bank, of course, where you just buy it straight. But you can also get this from attacking invaders, all kinds. I'm talking about ghosts as well, the purple ones. And every time you get the new level for your hero, you will also get a little bit of gold. Sometimes a fraction of it will pop in the Loki chest, the one this little trembling thingy down there. All kinds of competitions would have gold rewards as well. 
You will also typically get a very small amount of it when you scout it out on the global map. But we will get to this a bit later on. Now that you roughly know how to get your resources, where and what, let's get to another essential. That is training your troops. No great Yarl ever accomplished something that is worth being uh, saying about by scouts without their trusted warriors. And this is where we get this. We go to barracks and there are many types that you can experiment with, but they of course require some investment. I'm talking about, you know, time, resources, research of knowledge, and also bring some buildings. But it is comforting to know that you can really build a diverse squad, so to say. But those first four are your basic ones and we have some of those but we don't have any stalkers and those are kind of spy like um, troops very kind of hidden in the shadows very secretive they won't know what hit them essentially and that will be a stalker we can boost this of course as any other process really if you don't have any boosts uh, here, you can do that with gold, but we have some, so why not? And that's how you do it. And boom. There is one main kind of character or one main figure in your army. Heroes come with default names and appearances, but you can always change those. Like I'm showing now. I settled on this skin because I think it's, well, menacing enough, but it's also not that kind of all out. Believe me, there are far more extravagant ones in there. I think everybody can find the hero avatar that truly suits them. You can see all of their stats and you can influence those stats, of course, through prompting your hero research some particular processes or topics, for example. Right now, since we have the protection shield for three days, as every new player does, I don't really bother that much about offense and defense things. I'm focusing on production and learning. And so you see, I don't really want to research troop offense yet, but if I did, I would automatically unlock training speed. I can also do it now, but this would cost me more experience points, which I do not want to do. I will invest in learning speed. Because even at the very early stages, researching knowledge can take a lot of time, like hours and stuff, and if you don't have speed ups, that's uh, that can become a very tiresome ordeal. Now, the main purpose of your heroes, for now at least, besides combat, is this thing here. Those are the gates to Helheim. It's essentially, if you played Lords Mobile, it's essentially a hero stage where you just go from one kind of a dungeon to the other, except for here. It really looks like a proper classic dungeon. You just move from one room to the other. There are random encounters. Sometimes you get some loot, sometimes you will get a mob to fight. And it also has its own domain, kind of. It's not big, so there's a store. We can get some cold iron. Brilliant. Where you uh, pay with marks of resolve. Those you can also get from um, particular level milestones or from quests where you get a bunch of stuff at the same time. And of course you can also find it in the halls of Helheim. This is where you can forge some equipment that is only usable within the Helheim halls. And of course there's a champion's abode. This is not the same champion as your hero. They're currently in catacombs. We're essentially at stage one.
And this is what it looks like. You basically direct your champion to different rooms. Do some automatic battles. And there are various mobs in here as well. So Ash Infiltrators, this is the first time we get in this one. Plus, it really gives you a lot of time to uh, roam around and discover things. See, just out of nowhere there's a boss fight. Um, so unlike in hero stage where you can expect like two waves of simple enemies, let's say, and then a boss in the end, here it doesn't work like that. It can throw a boss randomly at you at any given moment, really. Now you can choose an auto battle or like I'm doing with a different enemy now. You can... Um, Choose this kind of a mode where you essentially choose what to defend and which part of their body would you like to attack. And if you are correct with your hit, then they will lose a lot more health. And there we go. Although I have to say that I cleared up probably 16 or 17 rooms already and this is the first time I saw a chest, unlike during the first time I launched the game. There were a lot more of those. So see, this is completely random. And we get 10 marks of resolve and some hellhem fire. Ooh. So yeah, you may want to um, continue this or you go back, it's entirely up to you. It's not a like a rule that you must complete a Helheim dungeon run in one go. So while your hero is running around in Helheim, what could you do, you might ask? Well, there are a couple of things really. First of all, you have quests. Now these quests, they're usually tied to your activities within the town, like upgrading all kinds of buildings, or training warriors, building new stuff, uh, gaining knowledge. So really, essentially whatever you do, almost, you will always complete a quest, kind of. And those are usually very generous with rewards. You can get some hero experience, some resources up there, or even marks of resolve some gold so yeah this is definitely something that i would weigh heavily in especially in um in the very beginning where you need you know to upgrade the palace you will need to upgrade a lot of other buildings means high resource consumption so besides upgrading the production buildings completing quests it's a great way to add to it then we also have tasks those are not unfortunately those are not really active so you just choose um, a normal yarl activity like tracking a spy or run some of those down or um, let's say some premium activities like accepting gifts because that's what a girl does and see for that task alone we got some materials which is glass some resources hero experience shaman experience all kinds of great things really and let's say i will want to track a spy so in nine minutes i will see what kind of fruits um did my activity bring? Then, of course, you can also take part in events. Those are also very closely related to your activities in the game. And there are personal quests that you just solo or clan stuff once you join one. For example, 
This is an event completing tasks. Um, and basically the more of those you do, the more points for this event you get. And for every of the milestones, there are 10 of those in total, you will get progressively bigger rewards. For example, the first milestone, 500 points is 150 gold, some boosters, and the last one is an insane amount of gold and an amazing, yeah, some amazing speed ups. So there's that. There could also be a trick of gods where you just have to continuously open Loki chests, really, or gain your influence, you know, stuff like that. But opening the Loki chest is, of course, as you can see, um, it has the most weight in this particular competition and in this particular event. Now, you might have seen um, some invaders related competitions, and this is also part of your tutorial, but the invader you see there and the kind of a sense that you put in this sword might not necessarily mean what you see out there. So this cute little puppy here, that snake, um, those are also in fact invaders. This is an invader as well, but it's a more of a supernatural type. It's a ghost that can only be attacked if you have a shaman in your town. At this present moment I don't have one. Besides this you can see there are some other kingdoms. You can also take advantage of all kinds of resources in there like this gold mine for instance. Not the biggest amount of gold and it also requires a certain kind of carrying capacity from uh, from the group that you send there. So if you really are dead set on, you know, exploring the map, gaining more resources from there, rather than producing those at home, especially for gold, since you cannot produce that, uh, you would have to invest in your army a lot. But we do have this poor soul of a serpent in there that just had, that just had to be close to our home. We do not condone this. So we're sending our hero, our brave, I forgot what her name is. Um, we're sending her to attack the serpent. And as a result, we're leveling up, getting some points, a decent amount of influence and some gold. That didn't take a lot of time, neither did it take a lot of health points from the invader. But this is how it works. As it feels, I would say uh, Vikings War of Clans is a much slower game than Lords Mobile, but I do appreciate the fact that it's very rewarding. It, you know, it really motivates you to sort of compete with, um, with yourself and everyone else. And it does have some curious mechanics that the game developers try to tie into the Norse myths and this image of the Vikings that we have in our head, in our heads. For example, this shrine of Odin that you can use to upgrade a maximum number of marches. So that is again very valid for those people who want to explore the global map more or just manage your soldiers. But all in all, I would say the most interesting part starts with the Kingdom Wars, where it's basically like a chain of clans competing against other clans in the other kingdom, where you practically go overseas like 
the actual Vikings would. And I'm looking forward to getting to this part in this game. Well, that was our random of Vikings, War of Clans. Hope you enjoy the game. Join our Wombat Gamers Discord server and be on the lookout for more guides and let's plays. And check back on Wombly for more games. By the way, did you catch the next game teaser? Which game do you think will go live on Wombly next? Write in the comments below and stay playing and slaying!